Welcome to How You Live It, a transformative podcast featuring best selling author, inspirational speaker, and minister, Dr. Rick Rigsby. And now, Dr. Rick. Hello, friends. Thanks so much for joining us. I want to ask you a question Have you ever found yourself fatigued, frustrated, tired? low on motivation, even lower on energy. It may not seem like a big deal, but you're just down in the dumps. You might not even know why. It might not be life or death. You just feel sort of stuck, kind of yucky. I've got great news. This podcast is just for you. I want to offer you a thought, just a simple thought that I think will help you climb out of the doldrums. Today, I want to discuss how Serving others can actually help you overcome. The wisest man I ever met in my life, that third grade dropout, my daddy had a thing or two to tell me about overcoming. I think his most profound lesson was on the worst day of my life. Three simple words he uttered, son, just stand. Son, just stand. I'll never forget that. It was Over 20 years ago, I'm standing in front of the casket, the casket that contained my first wife. I'm clutching the hands of my two little boys, and I look at my father, and he simply said those three words, son, just stand. What a profound lesson. It's a lesson that I continue to use this very day to push forward regardless of feelings or setbacks or circumstances. Here's another lesson my father taught me about overcoming, to serve others. He would often say, in the midst of difficulty, why not serve somebody else? And I never really got it. But he would always say, son, make sure your servant's towel is bigger than your ego. Always be willing to serve, especially in times of great difficulty. Like I said, I never got it. I understood the pragmatic side of service, We were always serving in our family. We would serve those in our neighborhood. We were reared to serve other people. Even as an adult, I make every effort to practice servant leadership, not expecting others to serve me, but to serve them instead. Now, while the practical side of service is easy for me to grasp, the therapeutic side of service required another variable. You see, I didn't experience the therapeutic side of service until I went through a season of heart-wrenching grief. That season that I mentioned earlier in this podcast that followed the passing of my first wife, it resulted in a very sad home for me and my boys. A home that was once filled with joy and laughter was suddenly occupied with sadness and despair and a sense of hopelessness. We were lost. Some months later, I remembered the simple words of my dad. In a difficult time, look for somebody that you can serve. Son, look for somebody that you can help. I remember doing something very simple for someone. It wasn't a big deal. It was a small act. But guess what? Serving somebody else forced me to take my mind off of my issues, to take my mind off of my problems. It's hard to serve someone else when you're focused on yourself. And you know what? Slowly I began reaching out. Oh, helping here and lending a hand there. Simple things like volunteering to help clean up after a church event or visiting someone who was sick and in the hospital, sometimes even reading to them. I remember once going to the market and buying some groceries for someone. You know what I discovered? I discovered a joy that had eluded me ever since my first wife passed away. It was so invigorating to actually help somebody else. It was the best therapy in the world. My dad was right. Now, I want you to think about our current times. The pandemic has not only resulted in sickness and death, but also fatigue, mental illness, stress, isolation. In fact, isolation can cause people to focus more inward in ways that are destructive a focus that can drift to shortcomings and to problems 
These negative emotions can quickly push us into the doldrums. We start living our lives down in the dumps. Well, here's a perfect anecdote for COVID-related issues. Look for people to help. Oh, baby, look for people to help. You will be absolutely amazed how good you'll feel. You'll begin to feel like you're getting a grip, like you're regaining perspective. You'll begin to feel like an overcomer. You know what, friends? I want to introduce you to someone who epitomizes the spirit of overcoming. First, I've got to give you a backstory. Recently, I gave a speech at a board retreat for Covenant Health, a Tennessee-based healthcare network of hospitals and healthcare delivery services. Covenant Health is among Tennessee's top performing healthcare networks. Covenant Health has over 10,000 employees and volunteers and 1,500 affiliated physicians. They serve more than 2 million patients and families annually. Covenant Health has been named six times by Forbes as one of America's best employers. Now, if you think that's impressive, you haven't heard anything yet. In prepping for this speech, I discovered that Covenant Health was influenced by the spirit of one single woman. Her name, I doubt you've ever heard of her, Marguerite de Uville. That's Marguerite de Uville. She founded the Sisters of Charity in Montreal, Canada in 1739. The Order of the Sisters of Charity, commonly known as the Grey Nuns, they derived their name, by the way, from the color of their clothing. Admittedly, I knew nothing about Marguerite, but the more I learned, the more impressed I became. Listen to her story. Marguerite was the oldest daughter born in 1701, and to say that she had challenging circumstances, friends, would be a major understatement. Marguerite's family lived in poverty. They were very poor, and it didn't get any better when her father died when she was a young girl. As a matter of fact, she was away at school. She had to drop out of school, come back home to help her siblings. She struggled in a marriage. She was married to a bootlegger. He'd leave home for long periods, whereabouts unknown. Despite this, the couple had six children. However, by the time Marguerite was 30, not only had her father passed away, but her husband had died, and four of her six children were lost in infancy. Through it all, through all these trials and tribulations, Marguerite grew in her faith in God and committed her life to making known God's compassion. In 1739, Marguerite and three other women founded an association to serve the poor in Montreal. They provided a home for poor children. A few years later, the association became a Catholic religious order. The Grey Nuns eventually secured a hospital in Montreal. Marguerite's simple prayer was this, God help me to open my eyes today to see where I can do an act of love for your sake. Listen, friends, a woman who could have given up, a woman who could have blamed God for her lot in life, a woman who could have wallowed in grief and self-pity, instead chose to do something. She chose to help people even less fortunate than her. Her grief motivated her to make life better for others. In 1959, Marguerite was honored by Pope John XXIII, who called her the mother of universal charity. Did you catch that? Pope John XXIII called her the mother of universal charity. It gets better. In 1990, Pope John Paul II canonized Marguerite, making her the first native-born Canadian to be declared a saint. Today, Saint Marguerite is known in the Catholic faith as the patron saint of widows, tough marriages, and death of young children. Great people are not defined by their successes, but by how they bounce back from failure. Saint Marguerite changed the world. She made a choice to get up. She made a choice to do good, to do good, to help someone. Pragmatic, therapeutic, life-changing. God bless you, St. Marguerite.
Thank you for teaching us that overcoming holds no educational level, has no status, has no financial requirements. Overcoming requires simply a choice, a choice that will offer good therapy for you and great benefit to others. St. Marguerite symbolizes that great quote from the late great tennis star Arthur Ashe, who said on one occasion, start where you are, use what you've got, and do what you can. St. Marguerite started right there in the impoverished neighborhoods of Montreal. What did she have? A compassionate heart and a willingness to serve. And what did she do? She simply and unwittingly changed her world, one child at a time. Great people are not defined by their successes, but by how they bounce back from failure. Think about these things for a few days, friends. Think about how easy it is to climb out of the doldrums if we take our eyes off of ourselves for a moment and focus on the needs of another. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Until we meet again, this is Dr. Rick asking the most important question I can ask. How you living? Are you ready to make an impact in your world right now? Do you want to stop existing and start living your best life right now? Dr. Rick wants to give you the first chapter of his best-selling book, Lessons from a Third Grade Dropout, absolutely free. Just go to www.rickrigsby.com forward slash free gift to get the print or audiobook right now. This is the podcastfactory.com.